Three, two, one. We're in it. We're back in it. Episode right, guys. two. Yeah, welcome to another episode of Sigmund's Cafe. You can tell right there by the title. Right here. I'm one of your co-hosts, Brandon Q. Dominic Strigliano. And I'm really excited about this week. I am too. We, I'm really, really excited. We briefly mentioned it last week, and uh, I'm glad we're getting into it this week. Before we really dive in, uh, any scuttlebutt? Oh, I got some scuttlebutt. Okay. Something's been on my mind, and yeah. I want to get it off my chest. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, so, I'm in a good mood, so let's let's do it. Yeah. I'm uh, really fired up. We'll get into that in a sec. Let's go. So, I have an opinion about something that I know is a little controversial. Um, I want to... We welcome that here, so yeah. Don't say that. We're from we're from the West Coast, California. in and out is basically mm-hmm. the, the, the ground of fast food, and everyone kind of respects it. People have huge boners for in and out Big boners. Yeah. A little, a little too much, if you ask me. Let me tell you where my boner is at, though. Okay. I My boner is for Shake Shack. Yeah. You know what? Me, too. Me, too. I like Shake Shack. Nothing wrong with that. I like Shake Nothing Shack a little bit more than In-N-Out. I do, too. And uh, Honestly, it's good quality. It's good quality. Bang for your buck. Big bang for your buck. The I think there's... I kind of came to a realization the other day mm. that uh, I'm not a big fan of In-N-Out's fries. Much like the reali- realization I came to with Gatorade. Where I'm only where's in Gatorade getting into this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was about Shake Shack. I w- it was, but I right. I went through a time where I was experimenting with Gatorade flavors, and um, <laughs> it all kind of comes back to it. My favorite Gatorade flavor is the red one. Oh, I like the blue. Yeah, I was I experimented with the blue a little bit, and the green and the green apple okay. is good. The, where's uh, the whole Shake Shack thing coming from? Anyways, though? I went to Shake Shack the other day, uh-huh. and. Um, I ordered myself. Well, first off, I had Shake Shack before, so mm-hmm. I met with my cousin. We had some Shake Shack, mm-hmm. and uh, you guys did the online order. Yeah, we actually you did had the quarantine I think we thing. DoorDash or something. Okay, and uh, I got myself some Shake Shack, ate it, mm-hmm. loved it. Yeah, and uh, my wife wasn't with us, so I, I figured she was sleeping. She was tired. She had mm-hmm. a long day, yeah, and I was course. like, "It's right around the corner. I'll pick her up some Shake Shack too." And uh, I go in there. And I order her what she normally likes, you know. This all sounds very normal. It is I'm normal. I'm really waiting it is for the normal. twist. There's if a twist. There is a twist. If there's, okay, there is? There is a twist. I'm waiting for it. And I order her the usual, mm-hmm. what she always gets. And I wait. It's it's COVID era, so uh, yeah. I wait out in the back. And I'm waiting for my name to be called. Which honestly, I think is kind of more sketchy yeah, than you, before. You kind of huddle COVID. with a bunch of people. Yeah. And just Everyone just goes, I'm here to pick my order up. I'm going to stand with everyone in a group. Yeah. And I was yeah. looking for shade, too. It was a sunny day. And so we were all hunched in this, like, <laughs> shaded area. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I'm waiting. I give him my name, Dominic. It's yeah. usually not a common name. Yeah, which I always tell you, you should not do that. I Do not use your real name. I, I always say this. I didn't believe you until this happened. Oh, okay. I, I really? go up there and... Uh, I heard them call Dominic, but I'm like, there's no way. It's it's too quick. But, you know, I too good I to trusted, be true. Too good to be true. I trusted okay. the employees there. I said, yep, that's me. Took the order, took the bag, drove off. And I noticed on the drive home. Sounds that normal. It's once normal. Again. Yeah. But Sounds really normal. I don't know what we're getting into. It's here. standard, standard <laughs> stuff. But I noticed on the way back to my car, once I took the order, the bag felt a little too heavy too heavy that's good though it is good and i you or know you, at the end did of the you day order did you order more than you thought or no i ordered you realize maybe i am this fat <laughs> <laughs> no it, it, it was a standard amount it okay. was just like a side order right. and a uh, main order and uh i look into the bag and there's a milkshake and i didn't order a milkshake Ooh, a nice malt shake there was a nice was malt it, shake. wait do we know if it was a milkshake or a malt shake because it was <laughs> There's a big difference. Don't get me started. Whatever on that. Shake Shots got, that's what I got. They got both. Yeah. I know their menu. And it was in there, and I got my uh, my order. I look in there, and uh, there's two burgers, two fries, and a and a, and a shake. Two and that's, burgers, two fries. That's not what I ordered. That's that sounds like somebody my, had the same name as me. Honestly, and, though, I'm, that sounds like my order. <laughs> <laughs> like, that sounds like my order right now. Okay. Anyways, I I, oh, get, yeah, yeah. I look in the bag, and it's it's kind of a better order. So I kind of just. Took you it. took 
Well, here's whoa, the thing. Okay, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. I, I have. I, I know what I'm gonna tell you. Keep we going. all saw Tiger King. We know what happens when you go in the Walmart line <laughs> and you take some meat and you give it back. Yeah, they can't sell that don't to the public. Fuck with the Tiger King. So if man. I took the order back, they're just gonna waste that, throw it away, or maybe some of one of the employees eats it. So I figured this is a better order. Yeah, I'm just gonna take it home. You. So where's the the twist? Is I ate Shake Shack twice that day. Oh my god! It was a good day. I thought, but you did take the wrong order. I did. Sadly, it was a mobile. No, 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 no. That's what I was gonna tell you. Don't. Sadly, nothing, man. It's a gift from God. You know, it it did feel a little weird eating it. No, no, no. Because like people will probably tell you. The right thing is to take it back and give it to its wife alone. No, that's not the right thing because no. I knew it'd be wasted. As you know what? This may be difficult to understand, but the right thing sometimes is the wrong thing. That's a good point. All right. And I know that's... Look at, I know, look at, well, okay, just let us. If I did the right on. thing and I took it back and I got my actual order, what would have happened to that order? It would have got tossed. It would have been you know wasted. What? The guy who... The guy or woman... Because Dominic, <laughs> we, we, gender ne- g- gender neutral, you know, we don't know. Anyways, true. Uh, whoever that was, they would have been like, "Oh, great, some stranger just touched my food." Exactly. And now I have to wait even longer because you took the wrong order. I'm assuming because most likely it happened. Shake Shack was like, "Look, our bad. We're giving you a free order. Yep. We're gonna give you. We're gonna hook you up. So win, win, win." And that's just another That's point. Great customer service. Another bro. point for Shake Shack in my book. Yeah, so, bro. Shake Shack's New York, right? I believe so. I yeah, had, bro. Come on. Actually, no wonder. It, I had it in Brooklyn, and it was. I had really it. Great. Yeah, I had it. I had it in Brooklyn. Also had it at. I think it was at Union Square. No, I think. <laughs> I think it was at Bryant Park. <laughs> One of those. Oh, okay. I think I was. It was in that uh, Newsies Brooklyn. No, it was in that like, you know, Happily area. You know that? Did you go to that park with the lights at night? I don't think so. I don't think we made it there. Okay. I also didn't have pizza in New York, which was a big mistake. I yeah. almost did, but I got really mad at you for that. I spilled it on the subway. All right. So that that sums up your scuttlebutt. Yeah, that's my scuttlebutt. Okay. I just wanted to get that off my mind that I I like Shake yeah. Shack more. Sorry don't guys. F- don't feel bad. I just hope people open their minds and realize the truth. What's on your scuttlebutt mind? Whoa, man. None of you guys know this, but man, did we have a nice thorough conversation before? Basically insecurities on my mind and it's really sad that it still still encompasses a person's whole identity yeah like if you're a grown man and you're still an insecure bitch i can't help you explain more i really can't help you if you are going around blaming people for doing things they're not doing or you're just out here assuming stuff is going on that's not going on i can't help you and if you're out here blaming me for stuff that I didn't do because I'm just me, I don't know what to tell you, man. That's the thing. You're going to do you no matter what. Like, we got... I got dreams to do. I got dreams to chase, bro. Yeah. You're too you know busy for that stuff. I'm too busy. I got to wake up in my race car bed with my mom bringing me breakfast every morning. Like, I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that doesn't happen. I wish it did. I got to interrupt you. We're in my garage right now, and someone, one of the neighbors is barbecuing. And it's whiffed it in here? That's what that smell was? It smells great. That's what the smell was that was coming in the studio? It smells amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, keep going. Yeah, basically, especially with the book that we have this week, Insecurity, it's not going to help you while you're chasing your dreams, while you're t- chasing your personal legend. That's right. Yeah. And do you want to introduce the book this week? The Alchemist. If you're watching the video, you already know. For those of you listening... The iconic classic Alchemist book. Yeah, if you're watching, you probably you probably saw the title of this episode and go, "Oh my God, The Alchemist!" I loved his project with Freddie Gibbs and his original album. No, we're not talking about that Alchemist. We'll get to him another time. Also, uh, who's that? You know about Action Bronson and Freddie Gibbs? You know I don't like music. Okay, you really haven't seen this? No. I'm really glad I brought this now. So here, take a look at it. For those of you guys who don't know, The Alchemist is also a very talented music producer. Can we judge this by its cover? Uh, Yeah, but please be kind because you don't know what you're talking about. That's true. Let's digitally zoom in right now. And talk about, so The Alchemist itself, before we really dig deep into it, The Alchemist, the book, is a pretty interesting book with a great story. That guy, The Alchemist, the producer, great story as well. Really great story. That's, that's a time for another day. Uh, 
Yeah, dude, that guy's a, he that guy's a fucking man. He's the yeah. fucking man. Very and straightforward. Anybody cover. that really loves like that uh, like quality ass hip hop music, The Alchemist probably produced it or Ninth Wonder or probably Jay Dilla. Okay. Yeah, can, that's we, my, can we talk Jay about Dilla, the cover? That's my boy. Can we talk about the cover cuz we I want to talk about the cover twice now. Okay. Cuz we got two covers. Why well, brought look at. this Okay, fine. You could do that. I don't know. Okay, fine. Just go oh, ahead. I know. That's cool. Um I've never listened to this. I'm looking at it. You, honestly, you have listened to it, and you just don't know. I've played a bunch of songs from that album in front of you. I'm looking at the cover right now. You definitely have I'm heard. I'm going to judge it by its cover because that's if what we you, do here. If you heard some songs from that, you would recognize it. Let's see the titles here. Okay. It's got an intro. That's good. <laughs> um, Yeah, I like the cover. Yeah, like if, if you're not watching the video, we're talking about the Alchemist first in- infantry album, which I on- yeah recommend it for sure. It's a classic. Basing it off its cover, it's... it's yeah, but that's the thing. It, I know we judge books on their covers, but you can't do that with music. Why? Oh, don't get... Come on, man. We're not We're not here for this. We judge everything Listen, by its cover guy. here. Oh, come on. We judge everything by its cover. Yeah, you can't just do, pick and choose. Okay, I know we do that, but I don't think it's the same. Fine. I don't think... Cause Fine. What, you want to judge, you wanna judge a, a CD by its cover in 2020? It's not the same, bro. Yeah, you know, looking at it, I don't really have anything to say anyway, so. Yeah. Let's judge right, this let's, book let's by get its back cover. Okay, so we're talking about the Alchemist cover. We got the 25th anniversary edition here, which is super swagged out. <laughs> we were talking say? about how this isn't the original cover. Yeah, beforehand I told Dom, I said, yeah, I got the 25th anniversary. I don't have the OG cover. The OG cover is honestly really basic, though. What is it? The pyramids? It's just the pyramids with uh, the text. I think the OG cover. Sorry. I like this cover. I mean, if you read the book, you kind of can understand the. This cover. cover basically says it's a legacy. If right? you look, yeah, we got we got the pyramids down here. Which, if you read the book, you know. It is more symbolic. I'll give it that. We got the two eagles, which yeah. was an omen in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like we got trails. Like a map. Exactly. Remember, because this book's a journey. Yeah. Um, got the Alchemist dead center there. Good, good choice by the graphic designer. Got the synopsis. I like. See, th- I will say this. This is pretty dope. On the back, instead of putting like a thorough synopsis, it's just a very critical quote from the book. It reads, "To realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation." From the Alchemist. I like that. I think I, I, I actually fuck with that. They're like, no, nah, let's not put a synopsis or summary. Let's just let's like. Let's let them know, like, we don't need that. That sums up the book in a way that you can only stun- understand if you read the book. They're, like, straight up stunting on us, you know? Yeah. And um, uh, it's this written by Paolo. Oh, that's right. Written by a Brazilian. I don't know if I want to just call him author because he's done a lot of public speeches. But it's written by Paolo Coelho. Brazilian, not to be confused with Camila Coelho. If you guys follow her on Instagram, style influencer. But that's another story. Keep going. Um, yeah, uh, he uh, actually wrote this book in two weeks. And oh, that's right. Yeah. And you know what actually sparked him to read th- to write this book no, was uh, I haven't heard this. He uh, so apparently he had this mindset that if he ever saw a feather, that was a symbol from God that he needs oh. to keep writing. What? Yes, it is. That's the truth. And he hold on, hold on. Where where are you gonna see a feather? Well, he saw the feather in I think a window of some sort of yeah. gallery. He was walking okay. past. Okay. Also, where do you? Hey, God. When I see a squirrel, I'm gonna chase my dream. Like we see. Squ- where do you? Wh- exactly. For me, it would be something a little more apparent, like a car accident. Yeah. And you know a feather? Funny story, I just saw a car accident, so it, I guess it's time for me <laughs> to start doing something. Okay. Um <laughs> yeah, apparently she was from Salinas and that was or no, she was actually from uh where was she you were there? Where was she from? Modesto? She was from Modesto oh, and uh, you I guess mentioned this. I guess that's uh the magic words to have someone <laughs> just uh <laughs> Go away because okay. the guy basically just drove off, didn't even exchange insurance insurance information. So, um, digressing, uh, what do you know about Paolo? 
I was familiar with him because I'd never seen him the way he looked until I saw one of Oprah's podcasts. No, not podcasts. She did an interview with him. And that was the first time I saw him. But he seems like a very, how would you say, learned man. Is mm-hmm. that the right word? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mary, he looks like he looks like he's about it, I'd say. He uh, he definitely is. I mean, he wrote this thing in two weeks, which was, I think, and as going, he, as he says, I think it was his purpose. Like yeah, yeah. This Along with his purpose, he was very dedicated to becoming an author to the point where his parents were like, this kid's fucking crazy. They put him in a mental mental institution three times. Wow. Each time. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know if this is fact or not, but he said, oh, every time I broke out. Like, he broke out of the mental institution to be like, a writer. Oh, really? Yeah. Apparently, his, his parents wanted him to be a lawyer, I think, if I'm not mistaken, which I th- I think for a minute he was, but I don't know. Basically, he, he's about it. He's really about it. He's written other books, and this was his first book to really pop off. A lo- and that's the thing. It popped off not the way you think. You would think. You would think it would pop off with celebrities promoting it. Will Smith spoke about it once on TV. Madonna mentioned it to Oprah. Bill Clinton, shout out my boy Billy. Bill Clinton was, <laughs> shout out Hillary as well. Uh, actually, never mind. Bill Clinton was photographed with the book. Was, the Monica, was Monica the there? No, I don't think Monica was there. Oh. I think she was waiting for him, though. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think she was. I think she was. You know you know what happened? Why, this is pr- in, now that we know what happened with him and Monica... I was probably his reading time was probably just Monica time. <laughs> Don't I, you think so? I, I, he probably was like, "Hey, I cannot be disturbed. I need to read my book, The Alchemist." Monica, you could stay under the desk. <laughs> That's probably what happened when we think about it. That's interesting. I, I I can't argue with that. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, whenever a president has time to read, are they really just. Are they just doing what we think they're doing? I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I don't know enough information to weigh in on that. All right. Yeah, I don't want to speculate because that's. I don't want. That's my boy Bill. Let's dive in. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You want to start it off? You want to start with the intro? No. Okay, I'll start. Uh, so basically, uh, it follows the trails of Santiago. Santiago, a young sheep herder who has a dream. He has a dream, and it mm-hmm. and it's basically, it kind of, it leads him to treasure, which um, he kind of doesn't take fully seriously at first, but he goes to a gypsy fortune teller. The thing, before we, here, hold on, think about Santiago too, if you haven't read it, San, he is really about it. About? Like, he's he's authentic, like, part of the reason why I think he became a shirt purder. That's what he was, right? He was a sheep herder. A sheep herder. At My first. Bad. He was just like, I want to travel. The, he he did and he didn't in the beginning. Because do you remember halfway through the book, he wants to go back and just be a sheep herder. Because he, he basically, without, he skip, doubts, right? which I, without skipping too much through it, he basically ends up in a, oh, yeah, I yeah. want to say an Arabian country. And he, he works selling for crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he works there for a year. He comes up with yeah, some marketing yeah, plans. That. And he basically wants to take all the money he earned and go back. And the person he's working for is like, you need to follow your personal journey. He's like, bro, you, you're not going back. You can't go back. You can't. You can't. That's what I, that's what I mean, though. He was like, I'm going to work my ass up, get money so I can leave. Yeah, but he had uh, doubts. Imagine Imagine if he was like, I'm fucked. I'm just staying here. Exactly. We should probably explain that that part, though. Um, how about you dive in? Okay, so he goes to a gypsy, right? Oh, no, we're skipping a very, a super important part. He was having a recurring dream. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, shit, I missed that. Yeah, he I, went to I, the gypsy. I zoned out, my bad. <laughs> he, w- he went to the gypsy. I zoned out, dude. Let me go back. He went to the fucking gypsy. He went to the gypsy because of the recurring dream. Because of the dream. And she told him that this thing, this is true. This is true. You, you know gotta what? you gotta follow your life's purpose. It's it's crazy. That's not crazy. I really like that 
this is where the whole fiction nonfiction thing comes into play, because if you if you're unfamiliar with the story, this is an allegorical allegorical novel. What does that? Did mean? I say that right? Allegorical. I believe so. It's basically basically means like you use this like fiction narrative story to tell a truth. Yes, that's true. And what was it? Who put it into the self help? section oh, of books bro the new york times the new york times which i don't like that like a self a fi- a fiction book being a self-help book that's whack yeah they're basically expecting a lot of the reader because the first time i read it i really just took it at face value because uh, it's a book about following your personal legend so why would anybody who has any doubt self-help that relies on oh i need to read something to reassure myself or I'm lacking something. I want no. Y- you wouldn't. You wouldn't read a self help book. No way. This is like a creative way at not reading a self help book. Yeah. If you're in denial. I don't think. No way. It's a self help book. If it's a self help book, I think it's way too low of a standard. <laughs> yeah. Like what okay. is is the Bible going to be a self help book? You know. Because you could, would argue it is. You can say, oh shit. Then we're gonna go through a different rabbit hole. Yeah, we'll get to the Bible episode soon. Yeah, we'll we'll go there eventually, guys. Just uh, you you'll in the future you already watched it, okay? Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um so he goes to this gypsy and she gypsy tells bitch. him yeah. she tells him that um he has this treasure that he's going to find and it's true, his dream is true. And which I feel like she says that to everyone. Probably. Probably. Mm-hmm. You're right. The gypsy, you can't trust a gypsy. But in this instance, I guess you can because uh, she basically told him that if you go, if you, you're going to go get your treasure, treasure, you can pay me now or you can give me 10% of your treasure. Here's the thing. I didn't know what to think of that bitch because she says you need to go to the pyramids. Right. That's where his dream was. Yeah. He, he gets there. Should we spoil it? I mean, do you guys want to spoil it? If we spoil it now, where's the episode going? All right, fine. We'll tie it back. We'll tie it back at the end. Okay, but basically, I don't trust this bitch. I don't like. I don't like the position she puts him so in. So the first time you read that, you don't trust it, or after reading it, you still don't trust her. Both. Explain. If if she hey, tells, look, if she tells him, you need to go there because your treasure's there, and give me one tenth of your treasure. She obviously knows what he doesn't know, which means she knows what we know. We don't know anything at this point. Okay, though. but what I'm saying is, if you read the book, you will see that she knew she ba- she knew there's treasure for him. Right. Okay. Yes. You don't think she don't know where it is? Like you don't think she really knows where it is? Why, if she knew, wouldn't she just get it for herself? Oh fuck, that's a good point. Huh? I. She's lazy. You really think she's lazy? What uh, you know what I didn't like too. I she goes, you don't have to pay me now. Pay me with the you know ten percent. Right. Yeah. I just think she. When I read it, I'm like this conniving bitch. Well, she's a gypsy. Yeah, and that's the thing too. This guy. Oh, I have a recurring dream. Let me go to a gypsy. What are you doing, Santiago? I think we're we're getting hung up too much on the gypsy. I think we should move on because Those gypsies. That was only like. A little bit of the story. I I'm just, I don't I didn't like it. I'm just saying. That's fine. You don't have to. This like will it. play into the bigger perspective I have about the book too. So he he takes this information and then he starts forth on his journey mm-hmm. and he meets a king. Oh yeah, he's like some random dude though. A random king and he he gives looks him, like homeless, right? Uh, something like that. And he basically gives him two stones. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, keep going. The stones are basically like the Matrix. You have two pills, and these stones. Oh, are supposed to that's how you saw it. That's how I saw it. Damn, I didn't even think of that. And I I honestly thought this dumbass is gonna believe in two like rocks, but they actually came into play. <laughs> yeah, they did. Which, I mean, well, here's the thing. They they coincidentally came into yeah, play. Yeah, that's what it's like. You could have applied whatever you wanted to apply there. All right, that's very true. But anyways. He he moves forth with his journey. He, he gets these rocks, whatever, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he makes it his way into wow, what country did he make his way into? Because he he starts his 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 journey in Spain. He was, ah, oh, damn it. He makes his way into. He s- left. He he left Andalusia. Uh huh. Right? 
and he went to Northern Africa? No, because because his his end destination is Egypt, and yeah. I think e- but Egypt that's like on the east, right? Okay, I'm not sure where he ends up, but he ends up at a bar. Oh yeah, this this dumbass, bro. Here, you want to? Everyone's wanna yeah, but here's the thing: everyone's kind of kind of got that point in their life where they are a little naive and they mm-hmm. yeah they make point, a mistake and he made a big one and he trusted someone <laughs> he he shouldn't have oh my god and it's it's a good lesson for everyone that you need to definitely give people some time before you trust he them. gets robbed by some rando at a bar that tells him he be, did he ask him where he was going uh, or did he just go i'm trying to go to egypt he like kind of he kind of tells him his idea but he wanted to buy a sword, I think. Oh, yeah. And he wanted to have protection. Right. And he gives this dude some money to buy a sword. And I he wonder goes, how the the laws back then were about swords. I don't know. You know, like stand your ground. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if that was I wonder, the same, actually. I wonder. <laughs> that I honestly. You can just chop always, anyone that comes up to do you. you. Really, do you think they had like an NRA for swords? No way. <laughs> no way. It was more free reign back then. I wonder... Well, when did this take place, actually? Oh, I forgot. That's the thing. We don't know. It's fiction. It's fiction. Which, I don't like it. <laughs> but, did you apply it to your life at yeah, all? Yeah, I did. Kind of. We got to cut. I got to pee. All right, we're going to pee. Cut. Should we pause the thing? <laughs> no. Yo, should I hit stop recording the recorder? Okay. No? Don't? Are you sure? Okay. All right. So Dom's on a pee break right now. <laughs> um, is this going to be in the footage? It's improv. All right, guys. I didn't expect Dom to have to piss because we took pisses before. He heard me. Anyways, a little more about me. Um, where do I start? So my name's Ulrich. No, it's not it. All right, I guess we're just gonna sit here while Dom goes takes a piss, checks in with his wife. What else is going on? I really don't like that it's fiction. Did did it piss you off the Shake Shack thing? <laughs> well, I think Dom was like concerned that like you wouldn't like you'd personally be affected by it. You know what though? I like Shake Shack better, but if you give me both options, I'm gonna just eat both. You know, I like quality. You can't argue In and Out isn't quality. All their meats never frozen. Oh my God, you're right. People don't fucking stop about Whataburger, dude. It does. It looks like it would taste better, but I don't think it does. It looks super, super normal. In and out just In and out is like a cute chick, man. You can't deny that like cute girls are never going to be out of style. Cute girl, nice fries. <laughs> oh, cheese fries? No, me, what do you call it? Ah, what the fuck am I saying? Cheese fries. Animal style. Nice malt shakes. Oh, my God. Secret menu, dude. That's what I'll give. I'll give In-N-Out. Like, Dom's not here. In-N-Out's got a, like, dope secret menu. Like, you know if there's a tourist in town, they're like, what are those? You know? And it's like, pff, you don't know about animal style, you fucking dumbass. Animal fries is it's the most imitated shit oh dude that was a quick piss oh man is your urethra okay okay watch the wire yeah you don't want to power piss too much because then uh it just gives you problems down the line i remember i remember in football like all the stalls were taken and someone's like We'll just power piss in the sink. <laughs> and then he was about to do it. And then I think he realized that there was a mirror and goes, Oh, actually, never mind, guys. 
Ooh, sorry about that. That I'm sorry you had to see that. And we're back. I am embarrassed. That and was, we're back. Dom had to go take a pee break. That was a mir- That was an emergency. Tube's getting a little too tied up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't even know where we were. We were talking about the guy that that basically took his money and ran. Is that what we were talking about? Yeah, we were talking about the guy at the market. I really hope that that's true. Like when we listen back to this, I think it's true. Okay. Yeah, this guy got robbed by a dude at a bar. How stupid is that? His defenses were down. He was drinking. He's okay. You're in a country you've never been before. You don't speak the language. A guy comes up to you. <laughs> I can help you get there. <laughs> oh, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. let's go. You and want all my money? Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, take it all. And you know what? <laughs> I'll just wait for you here. And he waits till they go to a, a bazaar. That's right. The, like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go to a fucking market where there's like a million people. Oh, I can't find him. He'll be back. I'll just stand on the corner. And that's he, so. That's such a great idea. He waited for how many hours? I don't know, but it was nightfall. Until night struck. He goes, oh, wow, it's getting cold out here. Maybe he's not coming back. Yeah, you think? God. And we can, we can draw that back to uh, if we want to talk about life. Life's going to kick you in the dick sometimes. Yeah, it will, but we really don't know shit. No, we don't, but that's part of the process. He learned a valuable thing that day. Oh, you know what? You're right. It's like I always say, everybody needs a good ass kicking once in their life. I. You need, everyone needs to get their ass kicked just once. I'm still waiting for mine. Still waiting? <laughs> I'm still waiting. Fuck Come you. see me. I'm still waiting. The U.S. government has kicked my ass for two <laughs> years now with taxes. Yeah. So okay, this is a this is a whole ordeal, guys. We can go on for this so for days. I've, I've got. I think I've gotten mine. I hope I've gotten mine. But I hope the so future will. I really. I hope you guys, you and your wife. I hope you guys really have. Yeah. I hope you guys are done getting your ass kicked. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, everyone really needs a good ass kicking, man. And he really got a foot in his ass that night. And he, yeah, he did big time, and that's where he stumbled upon the crystal, yeah. the crystal merchant. It's, see, and here's the thing: it happened early in his journey. That's true. It's and better it to happen early. It wouldn't have happened early in his journey if he didn't go take that risk. Yeah, like you can't. Like that's the thing. Don't don't sit around being like, "Should I try?" No, just fucking do it. You gotta go, try. Go do it. Go fuck up. Get your ass kicked, and then go do it again. And you probably won't get your ass kicked the second time. Hopefully. Yeah, but well, if you do, most likely you won't. If you do though, it's a great it's a great sign, I think. I mean, if you get your ass kicked a second time, then hopefully you learn your lesson. Yeah. I hope I learn mine. I hope yeah. you get yours in the future. Yeah, just don't you know say thank you. You just gotta say thank you. Yeah. Sometimes the dick isn't the dick. I don't know where the dicks got involved here. Sometimes, so in this instance, the merchant, he was an asshole. Mm-hmm. But was he truly the asshole? Because that, uh, made, that made Santiago a little more cautious for his upcoming journey. Sometimes, yeah, we need assholes in life, dude. We need bullies. Y- yes, I don't want to agree with that, but I you see know what where I, you're but, going okay, with but it. But you, you get what I'm going at. I'm not saying we need bullies in schools. I'm just saying you need you need to get pushed around a little bit in life. Life's gonna push you around. You gotta, and it's it, once you get that, it's something like, like that. You gotta push back a little. Okay. So he ends up in a crystal store? That's right. He end, he ends up uh working for a crystal merchant and uh he works for him. He takes well basically he first introduces himself and the guy uh gives him a meal because uh, what's he, the, Oh, what? he can't refuse. He can't refuse because of the uh it's some religious thing, right? Yeah, what's the book? I don't the Quran? That's right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the that's Quran. the one. I've read it a little bit. Anyways, he <laughs> goes and he ta- he accepts a job from him because he cleans up after himself and it makes it impresses the merchant, I guess. Not important. He works for him and he g- basically gives him some new ideas about how he can improve his crystal shop. All of this came to after he just got fucked by that dude. That's right. That guy, he took all his money, never saw him again. Had no choice. He's like, I have to do this. I have to work this job to get out of here. I have to do this because... My life was just screwed because of my stupidity. I need to get it back. Right? That's exactly So right. he went all in on, 
I'm going to give my all to this crystal shop shit. And he did. He gave them new ideas. He ended up working there. Well, basically, he got a little discouraged because he tells him his plan to go to Egypt. And he said, you won't make enough money at least for a year. So he, he gets discouraged, but he takes like the job that. anyways. Yeah. But he kind of turns lemons into lemonade by mm-hmm. in basically making new uh, ideas for the crystal merchant mm-hmm. to make more money, which will then make him more money. Yeah, he had this innovative idea, right? About yeah, he, he ended up... Uh, he served tea in the crystal cups, right? That's right. Yeah, dude, that, dude, I've never had tea out of a crystal cup. Neither have I. But I bet you it's great. Dude, that sounds like some nice bougie shit, man. Yeah. Dude, when they bring brunch back, bro, I'm going to be doing that. What do you mean? Where'd brunch go? We t- it's COVID, bro. You can't have brunch right now. I eat some yeah, but, bacon but, 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 well, but uh, It's not the same. I'm talking about let's go be basic bitches on Sunday. You know what I mean? With a little champagne and the orange juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I still do that, though. You know I'm the king of brunch, bro. Come on. It's true. He you is know, the king more, of brunch. More than anything, I love... Go into them basic bitch places, have me a nice brunch. You and me will go ahead and have a nice brunch. We hear these like ridiculous conversations, and then we're just right in the middle of it talking about our dumb shit. Yep, <laughs> that's how we <laughs> do nothing things make, here. Nothing makes me more happier sometimes of being in the wrong place. You know, I love being in the wrong place. I love where I'm not supposed to be. I love being where I'm not supposed to be. Sometimes I I just stumble upon an Apple campus and I take their snacks. Sorry, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. You guys know it, but yeah, that's look, what happens. Look, look, Netflix. It's okay. I just gotta sit on these toilets. Okay, all right. You know I the just, Netflix uh, toilets have a bidet. Yeah, I know. All right, I know. I know about the bidets. Just bro. Making sure you knew. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Anyways, he gets himself into the situation where he works for this crystal merchant and he works there for a year and he made enough money. To then pursue his journey. Didn't he make more than he thought he would? or was He it did because of his ideas. Yeah, he kept pushing. Oh, no, here's the thing. Because he was, f- b- because he pushed so many sales, the guy's like, well, shit, I'm going to have to hire two more guys. That's right. Yeah, that's dude. Yeah. Two more guys? That's unheard of. Bro, that's profits on profits. But he leaves. Yeah, yeah. He leaves and... He meets yeah. then keep going, keep going. He meets an Englishman. And this is when he already was like, Yo, I'm not going home. Fuck it. I'm just gonna <laughs> That's go to the Egypt. point where he actually decided where he was not going home because he, he contemplated going home and just buying a herd of sheep twice the size of With his the, you're talking about sheep. when he met the English dude or like right before. R- right before. Right before when, he, right when he's like, Yo, I I'm not gonna work for you anymore. Right. And he was, but it was he was they were both mutually like, hey, it's all good. Yeah, but he was going to go back home and mm-hmm. do the sheep herd. And yeah, thing, yeah. But he's like, he was like, no, fuck that safe shit. I'm two hours closer to the pyramids than I was living in Andalusia. My spark notes might be wrong. I read spark notes to freshen up. It's and they said that. Why work harder than you should? Well, I read it once. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm I not going to read it a read second time. I, I read it. I brushed okay. up a few pages, I, but. I read it once too. Guess what I did? Audiobook. Oh. Yeah, man. The audiobook's always Work a good choice. Work smarter, not harder, guys. Okay. How fast did it get did you get through this? Oh, dude, I listen to audiobooks on 1.5 speed. So, I think this book is about 5 hours. I finished it in like maybe like tree. That's the thing that's good about this book. It's short. Yeah. It's a quick read. It is a quick read. Will Smith described it as like a quick fun read. Will Smith said that? The Will Smith. Okay. Yeah. Will Smith senior yeah right? and you know will read it and jada didn't you think Jaden didn't oh read it? D- come on dude with what she's been putting him through come on guys don't get me started i want to get you started no don't come on we're not here for that i want to hear we're not here for this i want to hear what you have to say dude i'm not uh, uh, no <laughs> okay <laughs> come on that's so, for another day When's this day going to come? That's, that's for Women's Month when we talk about the women's authors and women's books, okay? When's, that's when's that going to happen? It's one of these months. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. No, I know. I just... I. What I, month is it? I want to surprise our readers. What month is it? I want to surprise our readers. <laughs> I know what you it is. You want to surprise our zero subscribers at the moment? No, guys, don't don't let them t- say that to you. Come on. Um. So and we're back. So he, he meets an Englishman. 
And yeah. the Englishman is an alchemist, not the actual alchemist, but an alchemist yeah. who's in search of the actual alchemist. Yeah, I remember this guy. This guy was whack, dude. They decided to go on a journey together. Yeah. And they, they both, don't they both go, I've been looking for this type of person. And the Englishman goes, I've been looking for this type of person. Right. Yeah. They yeah basically, yeah. we're like, well, yeah, we we're kind of like on the same vibe. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they decide to go on a journey together, and the English my the English man is a bit pretentious about his alchemy. And yeah, I don't like him, dude. That's that's the thing. You can't be pretentious about alchemy because that kind of goes against the whole concept. Yeah, he, of alchemy. It's like basically, he was really just a hype beast. You think he was a hype beast? I think he was like, "Hey guys, I'm an alchemist." Praise me. He Don't you like how cool my new Supreme Nikes are? That's I'm in the fashion Supreme Nike collab. The al- you know? well, the Englishman didn't have Supreme Nikes, but no, I know. But I'm expressing the sentiment. Uh you get it? like he he really wanted to be an alchemist for the sake of saying he's an alchemist. In a way, yes, he, I would agree with that. I I will give him. It's like to know about alchemy. Yeah, you kind of have to know stuff that people don't know about. So, yeah, I'll give you that. But he was in it for the wrong reasons, which speaks to, like, he wasn't a good alchemist. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, he no, really? That's he, right. That's right. When it, when it came down to crunch time, he wasn't going to hit the shot. He was basically looking to turn metal into gold and to look for basically the elixir of life, which is what alchemy kind of boils down to. We never really uh-huh. explained alch- alchemy. Do you want to explain what the definition of alchemy is? No. Okay, I'll do it. He alchemy is. Uh, I thought we were going to talk about the producer. <laughs> I looked it up last all night right. on Wikipedia because that's where I get all my information. And very reliable source, by the way, because anyone could be go on there and write anything, so you know you're getting the best information possible. <laughs> yeah. You know how many people are in the world? Yep, a billion. There's a billion people, and they can all write on Wikipedia. <laughs> There's actually seven billion. <laughs> There's seven you billion. Oh, oh, you caught me off guard. Yeah, yeah, There's seven I got, billion. I like. I got you there, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you got me. Go. Alchemy is basically old chemistry. So, and it kind of just basically boils down to what the old Englishman says that you you can make any metal into gold, and you can basically form the elixir of life out of anything. Which I know we're saying it very like basic, but having gold back then. Whenever this was definitely before modern society, what less than two hundred years ago was the San Francisco gold rush. So if you can just be like, "Yo, I can just make that shit in a pot," it would be a yeah, it's a very yeah, it's a big, big deal. It's a big deal, definitely. That's why, like, I think when people see this or hear about it, they're like, "I don't know what the fuck that means." Yeah, you know, I, I had to look it up a couple of times to make sure I was understanding. What alchemy and the alchemist mm. meant. So they go on this journey together, and they basically stumble upon a desert. That this they is ha- on their way to Egypt, right? Right. Okay. And they have to uh, go through this desert, and they're warned that it's basically ridden with um, bandits and thieves. It was during a time of war, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So that added to the whole danger and pressure of making it or not making it to the pyramids. Right, and their their first stop was an oasis that they had to mm-hmm. get to. So they take this risk together, and they basically say nothing to each other on this trip. They basically keep their words very mm-hmm. to a to a minimum. Yeah, yeah. And they take this risk, and they it works out. They make See, it to an oasis. To, this is why I think that guy was really basic, the alchemist guy, or the quote unquote alchemist dude. The Englishman. He, yeah, the English guy. He basically was like. I'm an alchemist, but he's, when you think about it, he's exactly the same as Santiago. He is the exact and, same. They're looking al- for something. Yeah, but here's the thing. If you're an alchemist, you're not you're not just an average Joe. Yeah, you got to. You're not an more. average Joe. So during that whole thing, I'm like, dude, this guy's, who is he? I haven't heard any, like, innovative speech, innovative talk. So, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, this guy sucks. I basically, I was skeptical of him the whole time. You sh- you were right to be skeptical. Yeah. Um, of course, I was right. Come on. Come I on gave. Say. Yeah. All right. Uh, he. I gave him a little benefit of the doubt because he's searching for his uh uh-huh. 
self prophecy, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They make it to the desert. Where? That, do, okay, what happens after this? They make it to the desert oasis, and yeah, this yeah, is yeah. where Santiago falls in love. Oh, he meets yo. He meets this girl named Fatima. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful name, dude. Mm-hmm. I yeah, it's a beautiful name. So he meets Fatima, and he ba- they basically kind of just live it up in this oasis for love at first sight, basically. That's exactly what it is. That's yeah. verbatim what they say. Mm-hmm. He falls in love with her. And Which isn't he real. What's What? Love isn't real. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Bro, it's not real. What's not real? I Love. I told you, dude. You don't think love's not real? No. Like, if you get... If you are married, you're stupid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I think... I think Like, you're, you're... You know how, like, you're married? Right. You're stupid. <laughs> I'm just not true. I'm just Jelly, so, if you're watching, sorry, Jelly. If sorry. you're watching, he's not being serious. Sorry, I'm just I'm being a little peanut butter Jelly. Me, okay, you're gonna get me in trouble. Anyways, <laughs> um, so they they go to this oasis. It can be real. Yes, it can be real for stupid people. How about that? No. <laughs> Anyways, he they make it to right, this. Okay, okay, fine. They make it to the oasis. Yeah. <laughs> and. Yada yada yada. Time goes by. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They S- Santiago has a dream that the oasis is gonna get attacked, which is um, unheard of because the oasis is basically a safe haven for women and children. And although the desert is ridden with wartime and war, they are protected because it's understood that you don't attack this oasis. This. So he doesn't he see an omen. Yeah. His dream was an omen, basically, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So he tells the, the tribe's leader, he waits, like, whatever time, and he mm-hmm. tells them that they're going to get attacked. And they're like, uh, no, we're not, you idiot. Yeah. Like, we would know. Like, who are you, guy? Yeah, this outsider comes in. Like, and you're, you're not even from here. How would you know? We do this all the time. That's right. That's true. Yeah. And he uh, comes in there and tells them what's going to happen, and they're like, all right, if it happens... You're fine, but if this turns out to be a farce, you are going to be killed the next day. So a lot. I thought it was. I thought it was three days. No, you're thinking of the end. Okay, let's let's keep going. Anyways, the next day they get attacked, and basically we skipped a part there where the alchemist comes in. The actual alchemist comes yeah, the, in. The real dude he comes in on a horse. They're really about it. Tells Santiago to get a horse. Meets oh yeah, <laughs> meets I like that. That's like a guy coming up to you, be like. Hey, you see my Bentley? You should get one. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like you ride a bike, bro, get a car. Yeah. It's like, yo, upgrade, bro. So he sells his camel yeah. and gets a fucking horse and he meets him at the alchemist's house and he basically tells him he needs to help him. And Santiago's like, You should help my friend. He's trying to do alchemy. It's like and he tells him no, he needs to <laughs> he needs to find it himself. Yeah, he's like, nah, man, like I, I don't do that. That's exactly what yeah, he said. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He's like, exactly nah, man, what I don't, he don't says. Do that. So, he, the alchemists basically, they get attacked, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're, he warns them they're all armed because they take the arms away. I like this. I like, I love, the, okay, keep going, keep going. Long story short, the Oasis is protected and Santiago's saved, and so is the Oasis. Mm-hmm. Next happens, we're going to skip a little bit because we got to get through this. Yeah. The alchemist goes to with Santiago to the pyramids. And they like, make this journey. Let's get the juicy scene. Let's get it. Yep, we're getting to the end here. It's my favorite part. And the alchemist leads them to the pyramids, which then they're confronted with a I think some some tribes members in Egypt. Basically the crypts just Oh wait, I don't want to bring you guys into it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Basically they they get to the oh, okay. They get to the pyramids in Egypt, right? When he's like, oh, wow, I've made it. It's my dream. I'm here. Where's my treasure? Yeah. And the group of hoodlums comes up and it's like, what What are you doing? And then he remembered, like, oh, I should tell the truth. And then, like, they'll leave me alone. Because no they'll think my dream's so foolish. They'll just walk away. And then he tells them, I'm digging for treasure. And they go, let's kick this guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> and they do it. <laughs> they beat the shit out of him. And then after, one guy goes... Well, okay, here's the thing. He tells them, I had a dream, and my dream told me there was a treasure here. And then uh, right after they're all done kicking his ass, they go. one of the guys goes, idiot. 
a genie told me my dream was buried under a tree in Andalusia. Psh, I would never cross the desert for that. Idiot. Under a sycamore tree. Oh, yeah, under a sycamore tree. Isn't that where he had the dream originally, too? Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. He went through all this shit to get his ass kicked. And if he didn't get his ass kicked, he wouldn't have known. Fuck. The treasure was there all along? The treasure was there all along. Yes, it was. That's my favorite part of the book. He made this journey. I hate the whole book until that part. It's basically the age-old tale. It's more about the journey than, I guess, the ends. Is it? (laughs) You tell me. I don't think it is. I think it's, if you bout it, you bout it. So you think the genie should have just been like, hey, actually, don't make this travel. No, no, no. Here's, Here's what I think. I think the genie says that to everyone. The genie says that literally to everyone who walks in. And everybody, 9 out of 10 people, everyone, 100% of everyone, 9 out of 10. (laughs) 60% of the time, every time, somebody goes in there and goes, yeah, you're full of shit. Here's 10 bucks. I can't believe I paid for this. And one one special person, maybe not even 9 out of 10, maybe like 1 out of... Ten thousand. I don't know. Whatever. There's always one special person that is crazy enough to believe that's true, and that I think is the whole purpose. Is you need to be a little delusional to believe that that's gonna happen, and it does. Because we didn't even talk about the part where he turned himself into the wind. I know we did. If you read, you know what? I don't even. I didn't even understand it. He was having conversations with the sun and the wind. Which is why, too, I'm like, fuck this fiction shit, man. It's a little wild, huh? Like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to talk to the sun and wind. I'm going to have a nice little conversation with, over some coffee. <laughs> they didn't that's have coffee, what, but yeah, it but seemed that's like it. What, it's like, oh, can you do that in this book uh, world? I don't know. I know. It's this weird world that Pablo's, Pablo's created. <laughs> the and, book um, That's an omen. Maybe it's an omen. Maybe it is. Maybe it's open. The only thing I do, f- I'm a big believer in science, though. You know me. Yeah. Yeah. Explain your science beliefs. Oh, why did I open this up again? Well, here's an example. Uh, actually, this is a terrible example. You know what? I don't believe in science, actually. You just said you believed in science, so you need I, to back I do, the claim. But I, just, I believe in science, okay? Let's there's hear no, it. There's no evidence. There's no... I just do. There's so, what do you mean there's no evidence? Just like, dude, that was never explained in the book. Everyone was like, it's a good omen. <laughs> they're like, it's a bad omen. You know, it's like, where's the whole basis of this belief? You just do. Yeah. It, you know, okay. it's a choice. That, I think, too, goes back to what I'm saying, where you really need to be delusional enough for the shit to be true. That's... That's a good point. I you do got to be a little de- delusional Look to follow. Look at Kyrie. Your... Huh? Kyrie Irving? Uh-huh. That guy literally believes he's Kobe Bryant. All right, P. Kobe. That guy literally believes I'm the man in the NBA. Dude, you're 62. Okay? You're a point guard. What are you what are you doing here? No, you're not. You're not the man. <laughs> he's delusional enough to believe he's that great and he's pretty great. But he is not, he's not LeBron. He's not Giannis. Do you think that if he didn't believe that, that would, that if he, it would dwindle his play? I don't even think he'd be in the NBA. So you need to believe that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need to be crazy enough to believe some bullshit for it to be real. It's true. That's what I, I believe. So everyone that reads this, it's like very on the surface. You probably got a good read out of it. But if you really look at underneath the under the hood i think you're gonna see what he's not saying you need to be very delusional in a good way that's what that's what i think i agree with you you know what i'm saying yeah and the thing is people are probably going that guy's fucking stupid well you're right but he had to be i don't even know what i was talking about i like blacked out dude what's going on (laughs) i think that's a good place to end this um, you have anything you want to send them off with? Well, here's another thing I like. So, Goodreads, just to give you perspective on how the book is perceived, Goodreads gave it a 
out of five. So the book we read not a four out of, yeah the book we read the man who mistook his hat for wife had a higher rating than this book. Wow. And this book is iconic. Like it is. if you guys read this, you're not gonna go wrong. Like I would, you know how we talk about is it worth or not worth it? Yeah, it's worth it because most of you who read this book ain't shit. That's a bold statement. Well, you're probably nice people. You know, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, I bet you guys are, you guys Well, here's the part. Here's the thing. My mom just I'm not a good she says I have a lot to improve on. So, you know, if I say you ain't shit, you honestly you my mom probably likes you more than she likes me. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a sad truth, you know. Yeah, we all got stuff we got to improve on ourselves. Yeah, I, I don't, but yeah, I know what you mean. I know a few. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What do you think is worth it? I would I say I really liked it. Yeah, I you liked it. Yeah, go read it. I loved it the second time on Spark Notes. <laughs> I would say it's like a really solid album. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's a, it's a very like recommendable book. I hate I hate recommending books because most of the time people just aren't looking to read what you're into. Right. But this is a book everyone will apply it in a way however they will. The whole point of the book with mentioning the whole following your personal legend it's going to be different for all of us. Mm-hmm. You, some people go, my personal legend is to jump out of a plane. That's who, what? I don't know. Some pe- you, That's what I'm trying to say. Some people, their personal legend is, I want to be the manager at this company. And some people, I want to be president of the United States. You got it? And wherever you take it, it's going to take you however far you want. Yep. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's as part of my beef. Like I really hate this book, but I can't deny that it's a good book. Yeah, like I hate it and then I love it, but mostly hate it. <laughs> I actually like it's it. It's basically the way the way that I feel about this book is I would describe as like the way that my father feels about me. Why would you say that? That is fair. That's fair, right? Yeah. That's fair. That's ex- that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's my dad. I'm his son. That he wish was better, you know. But he has to love it's you. It's like he got no choice. <laughs> he got no choice. You can't. His deny hands it. are tied. You can't deny it. His you hands got no are choice. Tied with you. Yep. Yeah, man. Well, so, that's all we got yeah, for today. Tune in next week where we cover the Bible. Do we? I kind of want to. All right, well, let's. We're gonna find out. All right, guys, this is Brandon Q signing off. Dominic Strigliano. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Should we? Uh, do you want to listen to the Alchemist album anyway? By the way, we should just throw that on, bro. Right, we should just throw that on, man. Yo, shout out Alchemist, Action Bronson, Freddie Gibbs. Hit me up. Hit me in the DMs. All right, peace. See you.